I've been meaning to build some kind of contraption to measure how much power is being used on different circuits in the house. And last year I set up this contraption which measures the temperatures of various wires and it tells me whether various high power appliances are on and off. And the graphs from that have been really interesting but it only tells me on and off. Now I want to measure how much power something that's actually variable will use, like our mini splits. But there's only so much time so I ended up buying this gadget which can monitor up to 16 circuits in the breaker panel. It measures the current using these clamp-on current transformers, two big ones for the power input, and then uh, 16 small ones for measuring individual circuits going to outlets and such. Now before I do anything with this thing, let's have a look inside. Here we have an ESP32, which is a microprocessor plus Wi-Fi, which is the same as on this little prototyping board that I've got. And on the back, we have an 8-bit CPU with a 12-bit A to D converter, plus two of these analog multiplexer chips to get all the different channels. And down here we have the power supply, which also sends a raw voltage signal to the AMD converter for working out what the actual power is. And then 16 little audio jacks for all the current transformers plug in, plus three bigger ones up here for connecting to the main power input. Three because it works up to three phases. Now before I install it in the breaker panel, I thought I'd set up a little test on the workbench with the current clamps kind of on my wires and I've got a heater here and that's set to run at about 360 watts and checking the level with the kilowatt it says 365 watts but the Empora says 745 I expected it to be twice the way I've wired it up but it's reading more than twice but it seems to be fairly consistent with itself because I've got current clamps on essentially the same circuit and going twice through the mains wire and as such, it sees mains using twice the power and then each of the individual circuits using half the power. And that seems fairly consistent. But it reads about 2.5% higher than the kilowatt, so I'm not quite sure. I tend to trust the kilowatt. But you can set multipliers for each of the individual sensors. So I guess potentially I could calibrate out any inaccuracy that way. And now testing it with my running bandsaw. This is more complicated because motors have a power factor of less than 1. And my kilowatt and the TP-Link smart plug right behind it seem to agree fairly closely on the power level. But once again, the Emporia gadget reads a little bit high. It reads 240 watts, which is about a percent high. So I'm running into problems. This is not updating on me as I'm doing various tests on here. And I think it's because it's one of those Internet of Things and perhaps it's having uh, trouble connecting to a remote server, which is causing this to not update. Let's turn the heat down a little bit. And let's see how long this takes to update here. Finally. Wait, it's jumping around quite a bit. This is not what's happening right now. Although it says 370 watts, 362 on here, so that appears to be up to date now. And what I've been trying to test is another power factor oddity by connecting this capacitor to it as well. So let's plug this in here. And that adds a whole lot of current without adding a lot of power. So we still have the same amount of power on here. But if we look on here, power factor is now 0.69. And let's see if this thing updates. I just don't know if I have an update here. It says 1205, 15. Okay, so it's not adding any extra power from the extra current from that capacitor, so that's good. Now this thing is meant to be stuffed in some random spot in the breaker panel, but I want to mount it above the breaker panel, but there's no mounting holes, and with connectors on pretty much all sides, it's kind of tricky to mount, so I made this rather complicated mounting bracket, and this goes in here like so, and I still have all the connectors exposed, and then this little block in the corner holds it in place. Got the big ones mounted on the 200 amp mains cable and these wires may not be long enough. I may have to move this down a bit. Now I've got my current clamps installed for the uh, first eight circuits to monitor, but uh, that's not everything. I want to monitor some circuits in this pony panel too, so I need to run an extension wire through the ceiling to this. So I'm going to stick this into the ceiling and hope to snag this knot tight on here with a long stick through the ceiling. So we've got this poked up just far enough that it's in the ceiling cavity. Let's see if I can catch it. Unfortunately, the one I need to go through is this one here. And there's an I-beam in the way. 
There should be a cable sticking up here. I can't really tell from the camera, so I'll have to do this without the camera. So I just taped the flashlight to my fishing stick with the hook on the end. And it took a few tries and a few contortions, but I finally managed to snag that knot with the hook. After quite a few tries, I managed to snag this and now I got it taped to this eight conductor network cable, which will allow me to extend a few of those probes. I then pulled enough wire through so I could reach the other breaker panel. Now I've got four current transformers and this pony panel here, which connects to the four pairs in my network cable going to the main breaker panel. And that network cable comes out here and it connects to the plug end of the cables for my current transformers. And I've got the rest of the current transformers in here now. This one I'm not quite sure what circuit to put it on, so it's just loose and on top right now. And I'm not sure if these connectors always make perfect contact in here. I had some flakiness, but uh, possibly that was because the interface on this thing is delayed quite a bit. But I found out that this one right here, actually, the connector on this was defective and I peeled away the plastic and soldered back together and put heat shrink tubing on it, so now that one is good too. I've been running this for a week now and during that time I read the uh, utility meter every morning and worked out how much it changed and also how much the Emporia said we used during that period. And graphing those, they're fairly consistent, although there's a bit of a difference there. But if I just go back here and I change just one reading to be one kilowatt hour higher, then it lines up much better. So it's just a matter of rounding and exactly when I read that meter. More importantly, the total for the utility meter was 273, and the Emporia worked out exactly the same amount. So maybe I can trust those readings. Maybe my kilowatt and my TP-Link both read 1% low and agree with each other. Now for our 240 volt circuits, the instructions say to just clamp the current transformer on one side of it, and then configure it to double that uh, power reading for that, because you know the current on the other leg is going to be the same with a 240 volt load. Except that turns out to not always be true. For instance, for this mini split, um, I think the outside unit that uses lots of power runs on 240 volts, but the inside unit, which just has a fan on it, runs on 120 volts, which means you don't have the same current on both legs of the circuit. So I could just put another current transformer on the other side, but that uses up another transformer. So instead I just ran the wire through there, but I can't run it straight like that because that'll cancel it. So instead I kind of have to go like this, loop it around backwards. And that way I essentially add the current on both of those. And then I no longer set up the current multiplier because I'm multiplying it by running both sides of the circuit through there. But the wires in the breaker panel are too short and too stiff to do that. So instead I just uh, cross those two wires over and put the current transformer over where they cross. And that way I pick up uh, both sides of the circuit in the right direction and they add. And those current transformers are rated for up to 50 amperes, so as long as my 240 volt circuit uses less than 25 amperes, I'm still good. In fact, I used that same technique here to pair two circuits, uh, one for the freezer, one for the fridge. They just ran both of those through one current transformer. These are both on the same phase, so they won't cancel. And some interesting things I've learned. Uh, this top loading washer, even though it's old and primitive, only uses about 0.2 kilowatt hours per load. But the clothes dryer, on the other hand, that one easily goes through uh, four kilowatt hours drying a load. Not surprising really, because the washer just sloshes around the water. It doesn't even heat it, whereas the dryer has to heat up lots of air to dry those clothes over the course of an hour. Our dishwasher only uses 0.3 kilowatt hours on the one hour cycle and half a kilowatt hour on the full two hour cycle. And considering it uses a lot less water than washing dishes by hand, it probably is using less electricity to use the dishwasher than to wash by hand. Our fancy oven has a quiescent power consumption of about 20 watts just sitting there. And what that means is if you use it just once a week or so, it actually uses more electricity idling than it does when you're actually baking something. If it was just me living here, I think I'd just turn it off by the breaker. And this fancy fridge with a double door and a freezer on the bottom uses about 1.6 kilowatt hours per day, whereas our old fridge, which is the same size and the freezer on top, only uses a kilowatt hour per day. So fancier fridges, more electricity. 
And these three light fixtures in the kitchen use about 1.6 kilowatt hours per day. Why? Because they're not LEDs, and they're not LEDs because these uh, fixtures really trap the heat, and they tend to kill LED bulbs. The user interface for this thing is a mobile app. Fortunately, that same app is available as a web app at uh, this URL, and essentially it's the same as the mobile app, and I much prefer that. And I can click on any of these, and it'll show me a graph. For instance, this is the by the second graph for our heat pump. I can also look at it by the minute and by the hour, although I find it kind of annoying that these bar graphs are so coarse. I would really like this to be a graph with lots of data points, like the second graph here. And I wish I could pop up the data for more than one of these on the same graph. For instance, for those temperature sensors that are measuring the temperatures of my wires, I have all these on one record like this, which is very handy. But a nice thing about this user interface is it's already written, I didn't have to write it, and I can't improve it, which means I won't spend an inordinate amount of time tweaking it to make it just right. But it is depend on a remote server to keep all of your data, but uh, I guess that's no surprise because one of those little ESP32s just doesn't have the storage to keep all this data. And it seems to be subject to the usual shenanigans of these online companies. So, for example, under intellectual property, um, any sort of use of the data and data mining and such without prior permission is against the end user license agreement, which is to say, I may have already violated the uh, end user license agreement. On the other hand, look at here, they of course can do whatever they want to with my data. So they're telling me that they can use my data, but I may not? Really? And they can shut off their service whenever they feel like it. You really have no rights with them. And because of all these EULA things, I can't really recommend this device. It works well as it is right now, but I don't know for how much longer. And really what I'd like to do at some point is to take one of these and connect all of these sensors to it and then just have it logged onto another computer, my own computer, so I don't need some third-party service that I really can't trust.